and welcome to the very first installation of Kitchen Science brought to you by Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory's DNA Learning Center. Um, you know, thank you for giving me a reason not to get sweatpants today. And everybody that I live with here, uh, thanks you for giving me a reason to shower today. Um, so we're going to be doing a human DNA isolation. Now basically to do this, it's everything that you need to do this is just right at home. So you need a sports drink or, you know, any type of salt water. I've actually done this before, just taking a little bit of salt, putting it in some water. doesn't really, just, you know, do a little bit, uh, do like a good amount, like a pinch. Um, pinch of salt in some water, that'll work fine. Um, any type of soap, you can use shampoo, you can use dish soap, I've used hand soap, everything kind of just needs soap. That's the way it'll work, it just needs soap. And then the last thing that you'll need is in real high demand right now, is some form of alcohol. Now, right here, I have some hand sanitizer from 7-Eleven. Um, I have some rubbing alcohol, which I actually had to get from a neighbor because the sores are all out. And uh, you need some toothpicks. And, you know, measuring spoons. And I believe the protocol also says that we need a little small airtight container, but if you don't have that, don't worry about it. We'll, I'll show you what we can do instead. So, the very first thing that we're gonna need for this procedure we need to get our cells out of our mouth, right? So you guys can follow along with me. So, you know, take some time, get all this stuff ready to go, and you'll be able to follow along with me. So I'll just show you what to do. And if you want to at the very end, if you don't have all the stuff ready to go, you can go back and you can rewatch it. Or you can, if you have all the stuff ready to go, just, you know, follow along with me. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to get our cells out of our mouth. And the way that we do that is we take one tablespoon of Gatorade, and it doesn't have to be exact. This is not really an exact science. You see, I added a little bit more. That's completely fine. This is not an exact science. Anymore. But just around a tablespoon of Gatorade. And we're going to switch this for 30 seconds. Now, I'll use the timer just kind of on the, 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 uh, the computer that I have up there. And I'm going to start right now. Perfect. That was almost 30 seconds. Um, we were real close. Now, you want to make sure that you're doing a really intense swish when you're doing that. You want to make sure that you're actually getting those cells off your cheeks and into this cup. Because if there aren't any cells, you're not going to get any of your DNA. So you need to get the cells into the cup. Now, we have all of our cells into the cup. And these cells are like little just kind of intact things. If you guys watched my first DNA extraction, I talked about cells as balloons, right? Now, the wheat germ that we were working with they had their own kind of, we had a completely different thing over there. Remember I said those were balloons that were kind of empty, right? The wheat germ was dehydrated and it was all chopped up. These cells aren't dehydrated. They were in my mouth. They were already hydrated. The reason that I have to use a salt solution, the reason I have to use Gatorade, is I need to keep the concentration of salt pretty much the same as it is in my saliva. If I add too much salt, if I take my cells out with a solution using too much salt, let's put, I say I put way too much salt in this Gatorade, what can end up happening is the cells will kind of like dry out, they'll kind of get all like shriveled. If I add no salt, this, the cells will take in more things, and they'll kind of pop. So we need to make sure that we have the perfect amount of salt in there. And that's what Gatorade or a sport drink is. But once again, this is working with just kind of a little bit of salt and a little bit of water. We're not doing an exact science here. We need to just get a little bit of salt and a little bit of water. Now, we have a soap solution right here. I'm not saying soap solution, but really it's just, it's just this soap. So we're going to be using this dish soap to burst our cells. And last time we did this, I talked about how this works, right? Little molecules of soap will insert themselves into the membrane, into the molecules of the membrane. And the way that they do this is basically you can think of soap and our cells, the outside of our cells, the cell membrane, are essentially made of the same thing. So they like to be really close to each other, right? So the soap is going to actually insert itself into the actual membrane, and it's going to break apart all the forces holding the individual membrane molecules together. So all of those forces are going to be broken apart. Now, once again, this is not an exact science. It's kind of just, you know, you add a little bit of soap, but we're going to say you can add one teaspoon of soap. So I'm just going to take this soap right here. 
fill this up. I'm just going to pour that right into the solution. Now, we got to make sure that this is, you know, perfectly mixed. So we're going to do just some swirls. We're going to do 10 swirls at least. But if you go a little bit more, that's completely fine. So I added the soap. And I just want you to take a look at this solution right now. So I added the soap. And I'm swirling it all around. Now, it says on the protocol, it says just do it 10 times. But once again, this is not an exact science. You want to do it more than 10, you want to do it. Well, just don't do it less than 10. But if you want to do it more than 10, that's totally fine. So I'm mixing this all up. And I'm going to let it kind of just sit for a second while I talk to you a little bit about what's actually going on with our cells. So human cells or animal cells, basically they're a membrane. And inside of that membrane, there is a nucleus. And inside that nucleus, that's where all, well, not all of our DNA, but that's where some of our DNA is, for most of our DNA is. Now, if we want to get that DNA out, what we need to do is we need to break those two membranes. And the way that we do this, those membranes are basically just the exact same thing. And we need to use soap just because of the way that soap interacts with membranes. It'll kind of break them apart. But now, I said most of our DNA is found in our nucleus. And I feel like a lot of the times when you're taught about science, you're always told, all of your DNA is in your nucleus. The DNA is in the nucleus. It doesn't leave the nucleus. It's only in the nucleus. And now that's not entirely true because we do have DNA in our organelle called the mitochondria. And that is a really interesting phenomenon. I'll just tell you very quickly in a very basic way why we have DNA in the mitochondria and how the DNA is there. Basically, in you know, the simplest of terms, when our cells were kind of coming together way, way, way long ago, millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of years ago, when our cells are kind of coming together, the mitochondria was once its own organism. And our cells essentially ate the mitochondria. And instead of just breaking it down and digesting it, the cells were like, hmm, the mitochondria can give us energy. And in turn, we can offer them an extra layer of protection. Now, our cells were not actually thinking this. Our cells can't actually think. We can't make this assumption that the cells are, are thinking and there's no real thing. This is all random. This is just randomly happening. It randomly happens that the cell is not really broken and the mitochondria is not broken up by our cells. And what ends up happening is the mitochondria gives our cells an energy. So that's a big evolutionary kind of bonus for our cells. So those cells start to survive and they're starting to work a little bit better. And those mitochondria basically, they are in there and they're just kind of like, hey, we've got an extra level of protection. Now, once again, they're not actually saying, hey, because they can't say anything. They're just in there. Um, but this kind of works out. But for this reason, this is called the endosymbiotic theory. And basically because of this, the mitochondria still have their own DNA. Um, so we are extracting DNA mostly from the nucleus in this, in this um, you know, procedure. But you know, there's definitely also some mitochondrial DNA in here as well. So I've done this. I mixed my Gatorade, I mixed my soap into a solution just like this. Now I need to add the alcohol layer. Now, the layer of alcohol is important just because some molecules like to be in water, some molecules like to be in an organic solution. Molecules just kind of, they will go to the area where they are the most comfortable. The way, the reason that they're so comfortable in certain areas is because of the actual energetic forces that are making that molecule up, right? So if those forces are kind of similar, they will go together. If they're very different, they're going to try to really want to be apart. This can be seen when you're trying to mix oil and water. If you're trying to mix oil and water, it's not going to happen. Oil is made of different things than water, so they have different forces than water, so they're not going to really mix. Now, some molecules like to be in one area, and other molecules like to be in another area. Now, DNA, it's okay with being in water. It's definitely fine with being in water. It has no you know, qualms about being in water, but it would rather be in an alcohol. Now, I know alcohol is kind of in high demand right now. Um, and when I'm talking about alcohol, I'm talking about you know, high concentration ethanol, high concentration isopropanol, uh, isopropanol, just high concentration alcohol. Where you can find this around your house, you can find it in hand sanitizers, just like that, you can find that in hand sanitizers, or you can find it in, you know, rubbing alcohols. Or if you have a very high concentration vodka lying around, you can use that, but I wouldn't suggest that one. Um, so we are going to be using the rubbing alcohol today. 
I have rummy alcohol right here. And as I said, I actually went to the store. And when I went to the store, I didn't have any. So I had to go to a neighbor's house. And the neighbor happened to have just some rubbing alcohol right there. And what we're going to do is we're going to add three teaspoons of alcohol to this. But you'll see my teaspoon still has a bunch of soap in it. And that's not good. We don't want that. All right. So we don't want to mix our soap in with the alcohol. So we're just going to quickly rinse this. I'll just say right here. It's the benefit of doing kitchen science. Just rinse it out real quick. All right. So that's been nice and rinsed out. I'm drying it with my hands. I'll take a towel right over here. Once again, the benefit of doing all of your science in your kitchen. Just wipe that down real quick. Just like that, three teaspoons of alcohol. So I have the alcohol right here, the rubbing alcohol. Now the way that you add this is really, really important. I'm gonna come over to the screen for this. You need to make sure that these layers don't mix. So you take your cup, you put it on an angle, and you just kind of layer it down on top. So there's one. I need to do this three times. I need to form that top layer. Just be very careful when you're doing this. You really don't want these layers mixing. Two. And then here we go, one more. And three. Right there. So I added three layers. And if you look closely, you can see the top layer is clear. Right? So I'm not mixing this blue layer with that top clear layer. That's very, very important. You need to make sure that these layers are completely separate. And now we're going to wait. You need to wait around two minutes, right? This is not an instant reaction. We need to let the DNA come into the alcohol. So we're gonna take a little time, let this sit at room temperature. While we're letting that sit at room temperature, once again, we're being careful not to mix this. You guys have like a little brother, a little sister, make sure you keep them away, they're gonna knock it over. Do the same thing with your dog. Um, make sure, that this is just sitting on a level surface for a couple minutes. Now, I said, if you guys can find like a little tiny container, like an airtight container, that would be great for DNA storage. I have a little tube because, you know, my kitchen tends to have things that might be found in a lab because I happen to work in a lab. But this is just like a little thing that you could find, you know, well, this exact thing you're not going to be able to find, but you know, an airtight container, maybe a tiny little jar that your mom doesn't need or your dad doesn't need. Um, anything, really, anything that's small and kind of airtight. You can keep your DNA for a long time. Uh, if you're storing the DNA in alcohol, it doesn't need to be refrigerated. You just kind of hang out in alcohol for a very, very long time. So I'm going to grab, let's do like a half a teaspoon. Once again, this doesn't matter how much at all. We're just going to add a little bit of alcohol into this tube. Right? So this is actually perfect. And I'm telling you right now, most of that ethanol got on my hands, but there's a little bit in that tube. You see that? It's just kind of like, just a little bit. I might say ethanol, but that's not actually ethanol. That's actually ethanol. It's rubbing alcohol. Force of habit. Usually when I teach this, I have all the stuff from the lab and we use ethanol at the lab. This is isopropyl. So if I said ethanol, I'm sorry for that. That's just a miss, that's a, you know, a miss speak right there. All right. Now, we need toothpicks. I have some fun colored ones, but we're just going to use this one right here. Just boring wood glitter because why not? And we're going to take this toothpick and you're going to go only into the top layer of the solution. Only into the top layer. And this is a little difficult, but you can do it. You just kind of spin it around in circles just like this. Right? You spin it around and then you pull it up and right there, you can see on the edge of the toothpick, that is my DNA right there. Now I can take my DNA, take that DNA, and I'll put it right into that alcohol, right in there. There we go, there's some of my DNA. Now, we're gonna grab some more because there's a little bit more left in here. And the toothpick is fun because it's, you know, it gives you something to do. It takes a long time to get that out with a toothpick. But if you're getting bored and you don't want to do that anymore, and you happen to have a dropper around, you can use a dropper to get that. Also, the other thing that you can do, use one of these measuring spoons and just go in 
and kind of try to scoop it out with one of the measuring spoons. There's a lot of different ways of doing this, right? So there's a lot of different ways of doing it. The toothpick is by far the most fun because you're kind of fishing the DNA out with it. You do some circles around here, and you'll see there's a lot of DNA floating in that top layer. I don't know if you guys can actually see it because I have this camera here. But if you look down in there, I don't know if you can see it. Anyway, if you look down in there, there's some DNA floating around there. So if you guys are doing this at home, there's definitely a lot of DNA in there. Just kind of spin this around and you'll pick it all up, get a little bit more on there. That's perfect. And then take that into the tube. Now, the fun part about this is, this is your DNA. Right, so we just extracted human DNA. I think I just messed up my whole camera angle a little bit, but that's okay. So that is human DNA. And if you think about it, if you guys kind of take some questions with you and you can think, why exactly would I want to extract human DNA? Right, like why do people want human DNA? Why would you think people want human DNA? Now, I can't, since I'm in my kitchen, I can't really see your answers to this question, so I'm just going to tell you what I'm thinking. Um, one big reason is crime, right? The crime is committed, and there's DNA evidence, right? CSI loves talking about DNA evidence. They always say, oh, DNA, DNA, DNA. Now, the very first step in finding that DNA or, you know, extracting that DNA is actually just extracting the DNA, what we just did. That's the first step. It's the most important portion, right? We need to get some of that DNA. If you have a very efficient procedure, you're able to get that DNA out of the cells. It's very efficient. You don't need that many cells. Then through, you know, this other thing called uh, polymerase chain reaction or PCR, you can amplify that DNA. So you get one piece of DNA, turn it into billions of pieces of DNA, and then we can figure out who committed what crime and, and all that other stuff. So the very first step is figuring out a DNA extraction procedure of human cells. And that is what we just did here, right? We did a DNA extraction of human cells. So, I wanted to thank you guys so much. This was really, really fun. Um, it was my first kitchen science ever, so that's kind of cool that you guys are here for that. Um, if you guys have any questions, I know our chat moderator is probably working real hard right now. Once again, I can't see her. I don't know, or them, it's all right. But I, don't, I can't um, see her, so I don't necessarily know. Uh, but yeah, if you guys have any questions, take your time and just kind of answer, answer, uh, show and answer all your questions, all right? Thank you.